Miriam. In your case, sir, I find probable cause for petty theft. And bond will stay at $500. You ordered to have no contact with the victim and not to return to where this incident occurred. Um, state, what is the status on the petty, the previously filed petty theft in 2023 MM 3098AO? One moment, Your Honor. He was arrested May 5th. Formal charges have not been filed. No action on that matter, which is your out on bond case, sir. Um, and for the record, I am appointing the public defender on all cases during this session, unless otherwise noted. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, Deputy. Okay. Alan Aguirre. Yes. Sir, you were picked up on a probable cause warrant for battery with one prior battery. Bond will... Stay set at $2,500. No contact with the victim. <clears throat> no return. Um, possess no weapons, possess no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm in your presence. A possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. If you need a visit, um, I don't think that applies in this case, does it, State? Uh, one moment, Your Honor. No, it doesn't. All right, thank you, sir. The Creole is on the line. All right. I'm sorry. Okay, we have the Creole interpreter now. Um, Pierre November. Pierre November. Yes. This is Judge Allen. Um, is the Creole interpreter on the line? Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Marcel. I'm your Creole interpreter. All right. Good morning, Marcel. We have, I think, is it the victim that needs to get the interpreter, correct? No, the, the, the defendant. defendant. Okay. So we have a lot going on. We have a lot of people who will be talking, so we'll make sure that we um, give you time to interpret. Uh, okay. the, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Ma'am, go ahead first and tell me what your name is. Raise your right hand and be sworn in and tell me what your name is. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony shall give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. And what's your name? Marie Petit. All right, Miss Petit. Okay, make sure when you talk, you speak in that microphone because I have to hear you, and the state has to hear you, the defense has to hear you, and the interpreter has to hear you. Okay? Ma'am. All right. Good morning, ma'am. How do you know the defendant? He's my husband. Do you live together? Okay, wait. The, oh, I, oh, okay. I do so, uh, so, um, Mr. Interpreter, now, can you hear? There are two ladies speaking. Could you hear them, or do I need to have them speak up a little louder? I lost them for about 15 to 20 seconds. So let's just start all over again. State, you you can start. Uh, go ahead. Okay, do you want me to interpret everything that is being said? Right now, now? starting right now. Yes, I want you to interpret everything. I will need some time now. Yes, I will need some time now. Okay. Because it looks like they're going back and forth real quick. Okay. Just let them know that there's an interpreter here. Good morning, ma'am. How do you know the defendant? He's my husband. Bonjour. Bonjour, madame. Comment connaît le defendant? Lycée Marie. Do you live together? Yes, ma'am. Est-ce que nous habitons ensemble? Oui, madame. While this case is pending, do you want to continue living together? Yes, ma'am. Pendant que car en attente là, est-ce que nous voulons rester tous les deux dans même cas? Oui, madame. Has something like this happened before? Yes, ma'am. Est-ce que ça arrive à Ça a été jamais fait en vain. Oui, madame. Other than yesterday, when was the last event? Um, à part de ça qui arrivé hier, qui dernière fois ça a arrivé déjà? It happened two to three years ago. Ça a arrivé deux à trois ans de ça. Were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? 
Non, mais non. Est-ce que tu as des drogues, est-ce que tu as des alcool qui est la cause de ce que tu as fait? Non, madame. Thank you, ma'am. I have no further questions. Thank you. Merci, madame. Je n'ai pas une autre question. Merci. Defense. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Pierre November, I find probable cause for the charge of assault. Mr. Pierre November, I have the indices that say that a cause is probable to be assaulted, to be aggressed. I am ordering a bond of $500. Ma ordre pour vous mettre pour vous mettre pour vous capable de gagner un bon de 500 dollars. I am ordering you to have no hostile contact with the victim, Miss Petit. Moi ordonne pour pas gagner aucun contact hostile envers Madame Petit. I'm ordering you to possess no weapons and no firearms. Pablo en possession d'aucun zam ni aucun zam à feu. And I'm ordering you to surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Et moi ordonné en dans 24 heures temps pendant 24 heures temps que au fin la gueu n'importe qui zam ou gain c'est pour pouter le bail la police. Ou bien 24 heures de temps pour faire ça. Do you understand, sir? Oui, je ne pas bien ça. Est-ce que vous comprenez ça? No, I have no weapons. All right. Do you understand everything that I said through the interpreter? Est-ce que vous comprenez tout ça à travers l'interprète? Oui. Your, your Honor? DCF was contacted regarding this incident. I am also ordering you to comply with any DCF order that may be entered in this case. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Merci, monsieur. Merci, madame. That's a duplicate. This is my copy. Mr. Interpreter, we do have another case. Juan McKendy Joachim. Are you Mr. Joachim? Jean McKendy Joachim. Joachim. Est-ce que c'est Jean McKendy Joachim? Joachim. Sir, you were picked up on a probable cause warrant. I'm not able to hear him. Monsieur, you are arrêté ou passé sous une cause probable. You are given a mandat. For count one, burglary of a dwelling with an assault or battery. Donc, ça veut dire c'est que vous êtes entré dans un cas ou agressé un monde ou frappé un monde. Bond will stay at no bond. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I did not hear that. I said bond will stay at no bond. Donc, il y a qu'un bon, j'en ai qu'un bon, c'est pas qu'un bon, il y a pas bon bon pour la gueule. Count two is obstructing justice. Deuxième. Chef d'accusation bien contourant, c'est que ou empêcher la justice de travailler. Bond will stay at one thousand dollars. Bon, pour ça c'est mille dollars. And count three, aggravated assault with a firearm. Troisième cas, troisième chef d'accusation, c'est que agression aggravée avec des armes à feu. The court sets a bond of three thousand five hundred dollars. 
bon que le tribunal la mette pour chef d'accusation. Ça, c'est 3500 dollars. You are ordered to have no contact with the victim. Et you order no pour pas aucun contact avec victime là. No return to the location this incident occurred. Pour pas gain droit retourner dans le local côté incident de passé là. Possess no weapons and no firearms. Ou pas gain droit en possession aucun zam ni zam à feu. And surrender any weapons or firearms in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Et nous ordonnons, n'importe qui zam ou gain, n'importe qui zam à feu ou gain, c'est pour porter le bas la police ou gain 24 heures de temps pour faire ça après que vous finissez la go. And I am also appointing the public defender to represent you in this case. Judge. Oh, this is the one that has the private. That's yes. right. Yes. Um, um, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead. Attorney Luce Root, on behalf of Mr. Hotem, I file my notice. One moment. Counsel, uh, uh, give the interpreter an opportunity to interpret when you speak. Okay? My name is Luce Root, I'm the attorney. I'm Ms. Luce? Yes. Um, judge, if I may, I, I would like the court to consider granting a bond on count one. That's denied. Yes, my man, those that are about to ban on bond, so premier chef d'accusation, judge, I respond, no denies. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Merci. That's it for the um, interpreter. Ms. Marcel, thank you. You're, you've been a great help. Have a good one. Thank you very much for using our services. Same to you. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. I hope I kept everything in order. Next I have is Millennia Simmons. Is that correct? Andrew Lopez, Your Honor. Okay. Lopez. Oh, I gave that to you by mistake. Sorry. Here we go. Andrew Lopez, Mr. Lopez, um, the court. Your Honor, we can waive reading on this one. I believe mm -hmm. um, he is entitled to bond in the mall, though. The court, you were picked up on a probable cause warrant for account one. Bond is set at 15000 For account two, bond is set at 1000 For account three, Bond is set at 2500 and for count four, bond is set at 500 You're ordered to have no contact with minor children, no contact with the victim, any other conditions that the state wishes for the court to impose? I would ask that he have no access to the internet, including um, access to a smart device, Your Honor. And no access to the internet, and you are ordered to have no access to a smart device. Thank you. Your Honor, he does um, use the internet for work. If Your Honor would be willing to make an exception. Um, At this time, I am not willing to make an exception. No use for internet or a smartphone, okay? So talk to your. Millennia Sim Simmons or Simons? Ms. Sim Simons? Simmons. Ms. Simmons, okay. Ma'am, in your case, the court does find probable cause Your for... Honor, I apologize. Defense mm -hmm. does have an argument for probable cause on this one. As to count one? As to the grand theft, if that came in as count one, Your Honor. That is the, the grand theft of a motor vehicle with a mask. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Um, defense would argue lack of probable cause. Uh, based on the limited information in the police report, it appears that she was a passenger in the vehicle and, and may not have had knowledge uh, that the vehicle was stolen. 
Uh, therefore, there would only be probable cause for a trespass. Additionally, it mentions a mask. I don't know if that really changes the bond or the amount. I don't really see anything regarding the mask. Um, there is some information regarding a mask. Okay. Uh, we would just be objecting to probable cause for the grand theft of a motor vehicle um, and that it is a trespass. Let instead. me hear from the state. Uh, Your Honor, I don't. It, it does appear that uh, this defendant was a, a passenger. I don't see. I, I didn't see the information regarding the mask. So I saw it. Okay. Um, I, I would have no objection, Your Honor. You have no objection? To, okay, the part uh, about the mask uh, is um, irrelevant <clears throat> to the whether it's um, a trespass, and so therefore, uh, but you have no objection to me finding PC for trespass only? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So the court will find probable cause for trespass. I set a bond of $500. Possession of paraphernalia bond stays at $500. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim. You're ordered to have no contact with any co-defendant in this case. And um, not return to the location where this incident occurred. Raheem Chantalope. Um, sir, the court does find probable cause for possession of a fictitious Honor, ID. I, I do apologize for this one. This is another one we had an argument for lack of probable cause. Um, if you review the statement, it's a mm -hmm. conclusory and short statement. It doesn't say who the ID belonged to or give any additional information um, to show that he was in possession of a false ID besides stating that he was in possession of a false What says the state? Well, it does specifically say he was found in possession of a fictitious ID card, Your Honor. Yes, it does. Um, but she does. she's correct that it doesn't identify. Uh, then no objection, Your Honor. The court grants the motion and releases you on your recognizance. No. I did not find probable cause, and I granted the defense motion and released to defend an ROR. Thank you. Donnie Way, Hamalak. Mr. Hamalak, in your case, the court finds probable cause for criminal mischief. Bond stays at $500. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim. The court takes no action on your out on bond cases. Thank you. Thank you. Javon Harvey. Javon Harvey, the court finds probable cause. Um, actually, you were picked up on an active warrant for um, for your charge, and um, bond will stay at five hundred dollars. Thank you, Ronnie Johnny McCauley, Johnny McCauley. Your Honor, he does have an offer to resolve his case if we can reset it for tomorrow. Reset for 24 hours, mental health. Um, Louis Ortiz. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, the court finds probable cause for your charge of resisting an officer without violence. Bond stays at $500. There is court an offer to resolve this case. That's fine. Go ahead. The offer to resolve this case today is an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, and he does wish to accept that offer and enter a plea of no contest. May I be formed? He is currently signing it, and the deputies are approaching with the form. The court's going to take no action on your out on bond matter, sir. Thank you so much. I thank you. Is this your signature here at the yes, bottom of this plea form? Did you read the plea form before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence of any alcohol or drugs or medicine? No, I'm not, ma'am. Do you understand a conviction on this case will subject you to deportation if you're not a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. All right. There's a sufficient factual basis. You are alert. You're intelligent. How much time, sir? Two, Your Honor. You're ordered to serve two days in jail, credit for two days, and you're ordered to pay all mandatory court costs within 365 days of your release, and I am ordering your release as to this charge. If you have any other case holding you in jail, however, you must resolve it or may need to resolve it before um, you are released. Do you have any questions? Um, two days, like. You're, you're up. If, if they give you credit for.
Sir, sir, you talk, you talk to me, sir. I am ordering your release as to this charge. I just said that. Thank you, ma'am. You have the right to appeal the sentence. If you wish to appeal, you must do so in writing within 30 days of today's date. You may exit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. I, if I do credit for time served, I order their release as to the charge. Just let them know that if they don't understand, I ordered your release. The judge ordered your release. Yes, Your Honor. Anthony Peterson. Mr. Peterson, the court finds probable cause for providing false ID to a law enforcement officer. That bond will stay at $500. The court is taking no action on your out on bond matters. Joe Vladimir Pierre, Mr. Pierre. Um, the court finds probable cause for trespass on property after a warning. Bond will stay at five hundred dollars. Your Honor, can we actually request that he be released on his own recognizance for this one? It appears that he has no prior history. The offer is a withhold credit time served, and he does. What says time. the state? No objection. The court will grant the motion for release on recognizance. You are ordered to not return to the location where this incident occurred. Thank you, sir. I did find probable cause. Just granted the motion for ROR. Andrea Sharber. I said it was okay. Casey. A reset for 24 hours. I know. Albert Joseph. Albert Joseph. You, you, oh, leave. You leave. Are you Mr. Albert Joseph? Last name U H L E I V. Who are you? The suffix. They put it too close to my last name. It's U-H-L-E. Okay, can you just spell it for me? U-H-L-E. U-H-L-E. Okay. U-H-L-E. The fourth. Okay, got it. All right, Mr. Albert Joseph Uli the fourth. Um, um, the court does find probable cause for resisting an officer without violence and bond will stay at $500. No action on your out on bond matter. Thank you, sir. As Rael Dennis, Mr. Dennis, the court does find probable cause for your disorderly conduct charge and bond stays at $250. You do have a felony case that I'm going to revoke the bond on. I believe that's been filed on 2022 CF 1509780. Correct, Ma Madam Prosecutor, that has been filed on, correct? One moment, Your Honor. A felony case? And Your Honor, just so the court is aware, it does appear that they are exploring competency concerns on his current open cases, and we would request if Your Honor mm -hmm. um, is so inclined to revoke the bond, you revoke and double as opposed to no bond as we are going through the competency path. Uh, yes, Your Honor, 22 CF 15097 has been filed on. There is a trial set for July 10th. So he was originally released on recognizance. Um, and uh, if there are competency issues being explored, then what I'll do is I just will double, uh, uh, order a bond of $500. There's nothing to double since he was released on recognizance. But Thank you, Your Honor. You know, if I had known there was competency, I probably wouldn't have revoked, wouldn't have revoked the bond. Which, which one? Which, which one? The felony case. No action. On the misdemeanor cases, uh, I, actually, I, I'm just not going to take any action on any. Uh, I'm not going to because there may be competency issues. I'll let the lawyers file their motion for competency. Thank you, Your Honor. Talk to your attorney. I think. Um, did you catch that? Um, no action on the out on bond. Kevin Curran. Okay, did they, did they do the scram on him? Because that's what I would have done if, if I had seen him this morning. No, Your Honor, we did it downstairs. Oh, okay, they but they didn't do scram. Uh, alcohol monitoring, okay, that was over point three something. But okay. Uh, Karina Vontanez Rivera. Bonded, Your Honor. Bonded per the jail staff, thank you. Um, Anthony, Chris, Christopher Anthony Perez. Uh, wait. 
Um, are you Christopher Anthony yes. Perez? Uh, the court finds probable cause for driving on a suspended license with knowledge bond stays at 500. You are ordered to not drive a motor vehicle without a valid driver's license. You also have an outer county warrant. Uh, Osceola County bond will stay at $1,000. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Darrell Lamar Butler. Mr. Butler's not medical, Your Honor. Um, do you want to waive on Butler or? Uh, Your Honor, we can waive on Butler. The only argument I was going to make is um, no probable cause for the no valid. Um, but no objection. All right. Um, as to Butler, the court does find probable cause for count one fleeing and eluding. Bond is set to $4,000. Trafficking in an MDMA and bond is stayed at $50,000. Um, the court does not find probable cause as to no valid defendant is released on recognizance as to that count. Any conditions, Your Honor? Um, no, no, no additional conditions. Samuel Caruso. Caruso. Uh, the court finds probable cause for rob. Well, actually, you we were picked up on a PC warrant uh, where bond is set and stays at 1500 And count two, petty theft, bond stays at 1000 You are ordered to have no contact with the victim, possess no weapons, no firearms, and you are ordered to not return to the location where this incident occurred. And thank you, sir. For Quavius Dennison. Yes, ma'am. You were picked up on a PC warrant for burglary of a conveyance bond stays at three thousand five hundred. Criminal mischief bond stays at one fifty. Petty theft bond stays at one fifty. You ordered to have no contact with the victim and no contact with any co-defendants. Not return to the location where this incident occurred. Yes, Dale Fowler. Fowler surety bond. Mr. Fowler previously bonded for jail staff. Her staff. George Garcia, you were picked up on a capias um, bond. will remain at no bond on both count one and count two. And, Your Honor, I believe this is one that you're not going to touch. However, he was found incompetent to proceed on 6-2-2015, and we would request if he could be released to ROR. But it is a failure to appear, so I understand. Okay, thank you. Position. Um, that's denied. Uh, Madeline Gonzalez. Um, you to appear. Are you waving on her? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. For, yes. All right. Uh, defendant was picked up for failure to appear for which bond shall stay at no bond. Eric Graham. And there is a PC argument on this one, Your Honor. Um, the court does find probable cause. For all three counts, which count do you have the PC? Your Honor, defense was going to argue for the add-on case of 23 CF 9060 that there's no probable cause for intent okay, to sell. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me just um, handle the case where I found probable cause on yes, all Your three Honor. counts. Um, as to case number 2023 CF 4720, uh, the court finds probable cause for trafficking in hydrocodone. Bond greater than 28 grams. Bond stays at 50,000. Sell or delivery of hydrocodone. Bond stays at 10,000. And sell delivery of oxycodone. Bond stays. Bond is set um, to 1,000. The second case, um, I, I think it's the one that you have your challenge on, 2023 CF 9060. Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Yes, Your Honor. Defense would object to lack of probable cause for intent to sell and state that this is just probable cause for a possession. The I, 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 don't, I don't disagree unless the state can show me something differently. State does not disagree. All right. The court finds probable cause of possession of a controlled substance, and I'm setting a bond of $1,000 and not finding probable cause of, with the intent to sell I am also finding probable cause of possession of oxycodone and bond stays at $150. You're ordered to consume or possess no illegal uh, substances or narcotics or um, prescriptions with, without a doctor's, unless being prescribed by a doctor. Prescription narcotics. 
unless prescribed by a doctor. Sandra Hamilton. Do you want to waive on Sandra Hamilton? Yes, Your Honor, and she might need a one-time return to pick up her belongings. I believe this was a roommate situation. Court finds probable cause for a battery on a person 65 years of age or more, and will order a bond. Uh, the bond stays at 2500 No contact, no return, with the exception of a one-time visit in the presence of law enforcement to recover personal items, possess no weapons, no firearms, and surrender weapons or firearms to law enforcement within 24 hours of arrest. Joshua Howell, yes, the court, you were picked up on a PC warrant for sale or delivery of fentanyl. Um, bond stays at $7,500 and possession of fentanyl. Bond stays at $150. Thank you, sir. Yes, if you stay in touch with us. Marvin Jackson. Yes, that's Mr. It. Jackson, the court finds probable cause for possession of paraphernalia. Count one, bond stays at 500 and possession of a controlled substance without a prescription. Count two, bond stays at $1,000. Thank you, sir. Denny D'Angelo Johnson. <clears throat> the court finds probable cause for possession of 3,4 methylene, methamphetamine, MDMA, ecstasy. Bond stays at $1,000. No action on your out on bond matters, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Dion, oh, there's a, is it the same person? Same first name, different last name. D'Angelo Kirkpatrick. Mm, there is a PC argument for this one, Your Honor. Um, which count? Um, for the trafficking count. Um, what says the state? Your Honor, the information isn't there, but it appears as though there should be a supplement. Uh, if I could get 24 hours in order to get that supplement, Your Honor. So um, the court agrees, and I had made a note that it seems to me that there is no um, documentation or facts to support trafficking. Um, 24 hours, state? Yes, please, Your Honor. The court will grant the state's request for 24 hours to supplement the, um, the probable cause. And to confirm, that is only with regard to count one? If it's only with regard to count one, then I can go ahead and go through the remaining counts. Was your argument only as to count one? Yes, Your Honor, just to count one. Oh, and to the carrying a concealed firearm, as that is no longer a mm -hmm. statute we operate under. Well, no, I, I, I don't know about. Well, there's, as the law has changed. Okay. Well, we, we can we'll make that argument. That, that'll be an argument to make on another day. But... Um, State, do you want me to, because I did find probable cause on all other counts. Do you want me to roll the whole case or just uh, count one? Just count one, please, Your Honor. Okay. As to count one, the state is granted the trafficking in 14 grams or more of fentanyl. The state is granted 24 hours to supplement the probable cause. The court finds probable cause as to count two, resisting an officer without violence. Bond is set at $100. Count three. Grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle, bond is set at $1,000. Count four, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, bond is set at $4,000. Count five, possession of ammunition by a convicted felon, bond is set at $100. Count six, possession of a firearm in commission of a felony, bond is set at $100. Count seven, Carrying a concealed firearm, bond is set at $100. Count eight, possession of methamphetamine, bond is set at $100. You're ordered to possess no firearms or no weapons. Surrender any firearms or weapons to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. And that, that's it. And we'll, we, we'll see him tomorrow as to count one. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Christian Laplace Torres, the court finds probable cause for possession of cocaine. Bond stays at $1,000. Thank you, sir. You did qualify, Mr. Torres, for pretrial release. Um, the court will order that you be released on pretrial release rather than set a bond. I'll order you participate in the pretrial release program. Thank you, sir. Any conditions, Judge? Random your analysis. Possess, consume no narcotics. Possess and consume no unlawful substances. 
first year analysis to occur, occur within 30 days. Thank you, Your Honor. So then within 30 days, Your Honor? Um, um, uh, how do we put it? First year analysis to occur, occur 30 days from today's date. Random thereafter. Devante Mack. They're going to get released. They're going to Devante, yes, ma'am. Um, you were picked up on a capias for count one. Bond stays at twenty five thousand for count two. Bond stays at no no bond. And your honor, is that a PBL? It was a capias. Your honor, if it's not a um, punishable by life or capital offense, defense would be requesting a bond be set in place, as he is entitled to a bond. Yes, if it's Honor. not a capital offense or punishable by life. It is a first degree felony. However, it is not a PBL. He is entitled to a bond. We're talking about count two? Yes, Your Honor. Can I see the, uh, I need to see the, the, probable, the actual probable cause paperwork. Your Honor, actually an information was filed on this case? Mm. Oh, an information was filed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so this was at large? Um, I uh -huh. think he had already... The, so did the judge... Let me just um, I need to know if the judge ordered no bond on count two. What's the case number? 2021 CF 158858AO. There's too many aids. It's 15858. So mine says 158858. So that doesn't work. So it's too many eight. Yeah, well, I'm just going by what's written on here. It just says court order. So I know that when I order a capias. I expect whatever bond I order to remain, and the judge, if the judge ordered a capius and bond of zero dollars, then that's what I think it's going to remain as, but I need to know if that's accurate to say the judge ordered it here. Your Honor, oftentimes for those warrants, they order no bond until they see an initial appearance judge. Well, let me just see whether the judge ordered this or not. Yes, Your, your Honor. <clears throat> I'm looking at the KPS, which at the bottom right here, it says court ordered, as if a judge ordered this. So I don't know if this judge ordered it or not. I don't need to see that what I already have. In order to recall and reissue, it said uh, attached was a con information was consolidated and it had information on the record of count one and count two. Okay, the judge signed as... Order to recall and reissue. Recall KPS warrant issuing due to the attached information and consolidation file. KPS to be issued in 2021. Okay, but why was there a KPS? What happened before the KPS? Um, I think what happened, Your Honor, is originally he was only charged with the one offense mm -hmm. uh, on the arrest warrant, and that was for the, um, mm -hmm. looks as though it's a sexual battery. Mm -hmm. And that's where the 25000 came in. Mm -hmm. But when it was consolidated, mm -hmm. the other charge or other two charges were not addressed. Okay, these, uh, the case number is on uh, the, what you just provided me, clerk, is an order from a judge dated March 31st, 2023, with the case number of 2022 CF 12558. Yeah, that case was consolidated. But the case number on what I've been looking at this whole time is starts with 2021, even though the 15888 part might be wrong. But it starts with 2021. So this one says 2022. This says 2021. Like I said, the information, the information got both case numbers on it. Mm -hmm. so, well, how would the case number happen to be still that close? You know, you know, that's kind of weird that the case numbers are almost identical, even in separate years, but almost identical. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Had you ever seen a judge? Did you ever go before a judge? No, Your Honor, no. They consolidated the case. Okay, so he never saw a judge? Yes. No, he didn't. I'll grant the motion then. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the court will set a bond of $25,000 on count two. Um, yes, yeah. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim. State, are there any other conditions that you are asking for as a um, condition of bond? Uh, I would ask that he um, surrender any, uh, if he has a passport, to surrender that, Your Honor. Sir, you are ordered to surrender a passport if you have a passport within 24 hours of your release. Thank you. Jason Christopher McNeil. Yes, ma'am. Um, the court finds probable cause for robbery with the firearm. Bond will stay at no bond. Your Honor, I believe he's entitled to a bond for this one. It's not punishable by life for a capital offense. Bonds is going to stay at no bond. This is a PBO. Oh, I apologize. You are also PBO. ordered to have no contact with the victim, no return. Possess no weapons, possess no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. And, Your Honor, uh, it's, I am informed it's a PBL. Defense would reserve their right for an Arthur hearing downtown. You want to have it right now? Your Honor, we can have the Arthur hearing downtown. All right, then you don't need to reserve your right for it. Just no. have it when, it's, when, you, when you file a motion for it. Stanley Michael? Your mental health status, Your Honor. All right. Reset for 24 hours. Wayne Milton. Mr. Milton. Yes, Your Honor. The court finds probable cause for possession of cocaine. Bond stays at $1,000. What's the status on his out on bond cases state? There were three of them, and I wasn't able to look up either one of them. Uh, one moment, Your Honor. Twenty three CF two five eight eight. Formal charges have been filed. Next court date is August second, which is set for a pretrial conference. The court revokes release on recognizance and orders no bond. With regard to six seven six seven. Defendant was arrested May twenty second and no formal charges have been filed. The court will take no action. Uh, again, with 5110, defendant was arrested April 20th. No formal charges have been filed. The court will take no action. Marvin Nicholas. Reset for 24 hours. Tabor Osorio. Court finds um, that you were picked up on a probable cause warrant for a charge of burglary with an assault or a battery bond will stay at no bond. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim, possess no weapons, no firearms, no return, surrender any weapons or firearms to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Thank you. Robert Samuel Reed. Sir, the court finds probable cause for possession of 134 methyl methamphetamine ecstasy and sets a bond of $1,000. And that was $1,000, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. Jose Salome Echevarria. Mr. Echevarria, the court finds probable cause for the charge of battery of one, one tri prior battery your honor defense would only be objecting to the one prior it just states that he was arrested for a prior battery it does not state the conclusion of the case or that it was a conviction what says the state uh, 
That is correct, Your Honor. However, if you look at the face sheet, his last conviction was for battery on a firefighter. Um, you object? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The, the court will um, deny the motion. Bond will stay set at $2,500. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim. No return, possess no weapons, possess no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Alonzo Smith. Yes. The court finds probable cause for grand theft of a motor vehicle. Bond stays at $1,000 and tampering with the motor vehicle. And bond stays at $100 in order to have no contact with the victim. Tawan Smith. I'm going to be handled right now. You're going to have to talk to your attorney, okay? Good luck. Tawan, the court finds, you have three cases. The court finds probable cause in the first case for possession of paraphernalia. Bond is set to $100 and possession of a controlled substance without a prescription, bond stays at $2,000. The next two cases are violations um, or out-of-state warrants from York County, um, Pennsylvania, and bond stays at no bond in each of those two cases. Thank you, sir. With everything. Okay. Judge is going to talk first. Listen to the judge, okay? Ricotta Seville, Saintville, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Um, told you I get calls, sir, all the time. Count one, the court finds probable cause for grand theft, third degree. Bond stays at 2500 Count two, grand theft, third degree. Bond is set to 1000 Count four, sorry, I messed up the numeration. Count two, bond is set to 1,000. Count three, grand theft third degree, bond is set to 500. And count four, possession of cannabis, bond is set to 250. You're ordered to have no contact with the victims in these cases. Irvin Sutton. Sutton. Mr. Sutton, the court finds probable cause for a criminal mischief in your first case, and bond stays at $1,000. In your second case of grand theft of a motor vehicle, bond, uh, I do find probable cause for that charge, sir, and bond also stays at $1,000. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim in each case and not to return to where this incident occurred. Thank you, sir. Contact us. St. Jeremy Timote. Yes, you were picked up on two probable cause warrant. Mr. Timote? Your Honor, I apologize. Mr. Mr. Sutton informed me that he had um, property inside the vehicle. I'm assuming that that must have been collected. Um, and if not. Am I being asked that? I don't know. I was not there. I don't know what's in that vehicle. Your lawyer needs to file a motion, sir. Sir, sir, your lawyer will need to file a motion. Okay? You have to file a motion, likely. St. Jeremy Timote. Mr. Timote, um, you were picked up on two probable cause warrants. Um, the charges are, in one case, fleeing and looting. An officer bond is set, stays at $5,000 and count two resisting. An officer without violence bond is, stays at $100. In the second case, fleeing and eluding, the court sets a bond of $4,000. Your Honor, we did qualify Mr. Timo for pretrial release on both cases. He does? Yes, ma'am. All right, and I will, uh, given the fact that you actually do qualify for pretrial release, I will order pretrial release as to both cases. Thank you, sir. And Your Honor, he, it does look like he has a private attorney who filed a notice of appearance as well. Um, well, until I see that, the public defender is appointed. 
Yes, Your Honor. I, I haven't seen the notice of appearance. Does anyone, can the clerk confirm it in the court file? Um, hand it back to me if the if the if there's a notice of appearance, hand it back. Otherwise, the PD is appointed. Sir, you're excused. Thank you. With you, if you have a private attorney, you won't have. A okay, sir. Sir, it's been confirmed. So I am not appointing the public defender. I'm not. It has been confirmed. You do have Jacob Stewart to represent you. That's correct. Yes, Demetrius Vaughn. Okay. Sorry. Jim, next person. You need to talk to your lawyer, sir. Demetrius Vaughn. And the court does find probable cause for tra trafficking in more than one gram of uh, lysergic acid. Di, I can't pronounce that. LSD. Um, bond stays at 50000 Count two, possession of three, four methylene, methamphetamine, MDMA, ecstasy. Bond stays at 150 And count three, possession of cannabis greater than 20 gram. Bond stays at 150 Thank you, sir. Christopher Walker, you were picked up on a probable cause warrant or failing to register as required as a sex offender. Bond is set to $4,000, and I am ordering that you comply with our reporting requirements within 24 hours of your release from incarceration. Octavius Wright. Yes, ma'am. Ron, we did qualify Mr. Wright for PTI. Very good. Sir, the court finds probable cause for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, fleeing and eluding an officer, and possession of methamphetamine. You do qualify for a pretrial release, so I'm ordering you to participate in a pretrial release program. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. No weapons, conditions. no firearms? Oh, no weapons or no firearms as a condition of the um, your PTR and surrender weapons or firearms already in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of, of your release. Thank you. You must further com comply with all other conditions of PTR. Madam Clerk, do I have uh, any other cases to be called on the docket? Court stands in recess. The, the kid, um, I don't know if she will uh, have custody of the kid or if I will have custody of the kid, but just a communication is limited to the child. No further questions, thank you. No tengo más preguntas, gracias. I do find probable cause for the charge of battery domestic violence. Determino que existe indicio razonable de criminalidad para la acusación de agresión física. I order you to be released on the pretrial release program. E ordeno que sea puesto en libertad condicional. Conditions of release are that you have no hostile contact with the victim. Eh, las condiciones de su libertad condicional es que no tenga ningún tipo de trato hostil con la víctima. No return. Puede regresar al lugar donde se llevaron a cabo el incidente. Maintain a separate residence. Debe obtener una residencia aparte. Possess no weapons and no firearms. Tampoco puede poseer armas de fuego o armas blancas. And surrender any weapons or firearms in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Deberá entregarle todas las armas de fuego y armas blancas dentro de 24 horas a las autoridades una vez se ha puesto en libertad condicional. Is there a need to enter an order regarding DCF state? Yes, Your Honor. Fiscalía, ¿acaso se tiene que emitir una orden con respecto al Departamento de Menores y Familias? Sí, su señoría. You must also comply with any DCF order that may be entered in this case. También debe eh, cumplir con cualquier orden del Departamento de Familia y de Menores que tal vez se pueda emitir en este... Eh. Do you understand, ma'am? Señora, ¿entendió todo? Yes. Yes. And Thank you. Your Honor, we would request a one-time return with law enforcement present to retrieve her belongings. Su señoría, vamos a solicitar que ella pueda regresar a la residencia en una sola ocasión escoltado por las autoridades para que pueda recoger sus pertenencias. Yes. 
Ma'am, you are allowed a one-time visit in the presence of law enforcement to recover personal items. Sí, señora, le voy a permitir que regrese en una ocasión a, a la residencia escoltado por la, escoltada por las autoridades para que pueda recoger sus pertenencias. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir. Your Honor, I'm sorry, I have one question. Um, I believe they live in the same building if it's an apartment. I just wanted to find out the victim's apartment number. We have her apartment, but I want to make sure it's more okay. Than that, please, Mr. Interpreter. Su señoría, tengo una pregunta. Tengo entendido que ellos viven en el mismo edificio, pero no sé si es el mismo apartamento. Tengo aquí el número de apartamento de la acusada, pero no tengo el número de apartamento de la víctima. Ms. Bridgeshaw, do you have that information? Señora, ¿tienes información? Uh, he lives in another apartment. I live in number one and building number one is from 11. She said she's in building number one and he's in building number 11. That's, um, Christopher, can you say that so the victim can understand what I just said? Señor, ella indica que ella vive en el edificio número uno y usted vive en el edificio número once. ¿Acaso eso es cierto? Sir, is that correct? ¿Eso es cierto, señor? Yo me mudé hace, hace poco porque por la misma situación. I moved recently due to this uh, situation. I have moved into building number 11. Okay, thank you. Bien, gracias. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Gracias a todos. Gracias, señor. And your honor, I apologize. May I please get to the phone? Oh, yes. I forgot to give you 2023 MM. Four seven seven one AO. Thank you, Your Honor. And her name? Um, Heidi D. Giacomo. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Would that be it for the Spanish interpreter? Yes, that's it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Enjoy your weekend, Your Honor. You do the same. Thank you. All right. The next case I have is Juan Antonio Placeres. Mr. Placeres, sir, I find probable cause in your charge for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and I am ordering a bond of $1,500. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim, no return, possess no weapons, no firearms, and surrender any weapons or firearms to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, is that two victims? No contact. One victim. Thank you, sir. Robert Evans Fournay. Mr. Fournay. You were picked up on a warrant from Seminole County. Bond will stay at $995 as to that warrant. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Pierre November. Oh, not here yet. Okay, okay. All right, I'll put Mr. November's case to the side. I think he's this afternoon, so I don't think I have him right now. Not in my staff, I don't think. Okay, I'll bond up. Uh, can I bond Rafael up? Rodriguez. Get a guy that can pay them.
Mr. Rodriguez, I find probable cause for trespass on property. Bond will stay at 250. Your Honor, there is an offer to resolve. Okay. The offer from the state is an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, no return to 407 South Goldenrod, um, and he does wish to accept that offer and enter a plea of no contest. How much time served does he have? Three days, Your Honor. Mr. Rodriguez, is this your signature here at the bottom of this plea form? Yes, ma'am. Did you read this document in its entirety? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence of any alcohol or medication or drugs at this time? Negative, ma'am. Do you understand that a conviction on this case will subject you to deportation if you're not a U.S. citizen? All right, sir, I reviewed your file. There is a sufficient factual basis to accept your plea. You're alert and intelligent. At this time, you're adjudicated guilty as to both count one and count two. You're sentenced to three days in jail concurrent on count one and count two. You're ordered to not return to 407 South Golden Rod Road. Further, you must pay all mandatory court costs within 365 days of your release. I am ordering your release as to this charge. If you have any other case pending, then you may need to resolve it before you get out of jail. Do you have any questions? No, ma'am. You have the right to appeal the sentence. If you wish to appeal, you must do so in writing within 30 days of today's date. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You're excused. Thank you. Any more? Kenny Moore? Sir, in your case, I do find probable cause for aggravated battery with great bodily harm while dating. Bond is set at $5,000. Resisting without violence. Bond is set at $1,000. Obstruction by false information. Bond is set at $150. Um, Resisting bond is set at $500 correction, not $1,500. Sir, you're ordered to have no contact with the victim. You're ordered to maintain a separate residence and not return to the location where this incident occurred. You're ordered to possess no weapons and no firearms and surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Thank you, sir. Christopher Smith. Thank you, sir. Christopher Smith. Mr. Smith, you were picked up on a probable cause warrant for battery and grand theft. Bond stays at, will be set at $500 on count one and $1,000 on count two. Oh, there's a victim. Raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear for the testimony shall give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. State your name for the record. Abria Mosley. So Mr. Smith does have two cases. Um, Ma'am, could you just please repeat your name? I want to be sure I have which it's case you are involved with. Abria Mosley. Mosley? Yes. Patterson okay. Mosley. Okay, I need you to speak into that microphone so I can hear you. State which case is she the victim on since he does have two cases. Or is it both cases? It's both. Both? All right. Ma'am, the state or defense may have questions of you regarding these cases. Please answer all questions into that microphone. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How do you know the defendant? It's my boyfriend. Do you live together? Yes. While this case is pending, do you want to continue living together? Yes. Has something like this happened before? No. Are drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? No. Thank you. I have no further questions. Defense? No questions, Your Honor. All right. As to the case involving 2023 CF 6976, bond is set at 500 on count one, 1,000 on count two. You order to have no hostile contact with the victim. Possess no weapons, no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. As to 2023 CF4579, I also find probable cause. Bond is set at 1500 on count one, 500 on count two. 
You're ordered to have no hostile contact with the victim, no weapons, no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir. Your, Your Honor, I apologize. I didn't get the bond on count two for 4579. 500. Thank you. Julius Lawrence Spires. The court finds probable cause in your case for are based on a PC warrant, count one aggravated stalking with an injunction and violation of an injunction. Bond is set at 5,000 on count one. Bond is set at 1,000 on count two. You're ordered to have no contact with the victim. And possess no weapons, possess no firearms, surrender any weapon or firearm to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. And you're ordered to not come within 500 feet uh, yards of the victim, sorry. Um, your Honor, I understand that this- Who's speaking? I apologize, defense, Your Honor, Stephanie Pritchell, um, for yes, the record. I know this was a probable cause warrant. Yes, However, in reviewing the warrant, it appears that there may not be enough probable cause for the aggravated portion. It has to be repeated. Um, defense would just ask if Your Honor would be willing to lower the bond of 5,000 to reflect that. Additionally, um, that's denied. Thank you. That is denied. Thank you, Your Honor. One thousand. Carl Addison, the court does find probable cause for your charge of battery domestic violence, and I set a bond of $500 in your case. Mr. Addison, you're ordered to have no contact with the victim, no return, possess no weapons, possess no firearms, and surrender all weapons or firearms to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, it does look like he qualifies for pretrial release, if Your Honor would be willing to release him on that. So I noticed that he does qualify, but I also noticed that it was a father and a son. Uh, does he qualify for pretrial release, actually? He does, Your Honor. You're discreet. Okay. So, um, sir, I will release you on a pretrial release program um, You, because of the you know father and stepson, actually. Uh, you still are ordered to have no contact with the victim. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, can we just have a one-time return with law enforcement to reduce That's granted. Bond? Yes. Yeah. You, you are authorized to have a one-time visit with law enforcement to recover your personal items. Call law enforcement first, okay? Good luck. PTR, pre-trial release. Okay. Terrence Atkins. Mr. Atkins, in your case, the court finds probable cause for battery, dating, violence, I am ordering a bond of $500, ordering you to have no contact with the victim. No return to the location this incident occurred. Maintain a separate residence from the victim. Possess no weapons, no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. And your honor, he will need a one-time return with law enforcement to retrieve his belongings. From where? A return to where? Your Honor, he informed me that he is living with the um, alleged victim at this time. Where? Uh, what city, what state? Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida? All right. I'll allow a one-time visit to uh, recover personal belongings with law enforcement present. Vashon Carter. Vaishon Carter, Carter, sorry. Sir, I find probable cause in your case for battery, domestic violence. I'm going to order you to be released on the pretrial release program. Further, I am ordering you to have no contact with the victim, no return with the exception of a one-time visit with law enforcement if needed. I am ordering you to comply with any DCF order that may be um, entered in this case. I'm ordering you to... Um, um, possess no weapons and no firearms and surrender any weapon or firearm to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Thank you, sir. Deja Daniels. 
Ms. Daniels, the court finds probable cause for battery, dating, violence, and I am ordering you to be released on the pretrial release program, ordering you to have no contact with the victim. Further, I am ordering you to not return to where this incident occurred with the exception of a one-time visit if needed with law enforcement. Further, you must possess no weapons, no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Autumn Gigliotti. Autumn Gigliotti. I need movement here. Autumn Gigliotti. Are you Autumn Gigliotti? Yeah, All right, ma'am, I find probable cause in your case for battery. I am ordering that you be released on the pretrial release program. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, I can. All right, very good. Released on the pretrial release program. I'm ordering you to have no contact with the victim, possess no weapons, possess no firearms. I am ordering you to not return to where this incident occurred. However, if you need a one-time visit with law enforcement, I am authorizing that. Thank you, Ms. Gigliotti. Christopher Hamlin. Mr. Hamlin, yes, the court does find probable cause in your case for a battery. I am ordering that you be released. Actually, does he qualify for pretrial release? He does not. I'm ordering a $500 bond, um, as well as I am ordering that you have no contact with the victim, no return. If you do need a one-time visit in the presence of law enforcement, I do authorize that. You must possess no weapons, no firearms as a condition of your release and surrender any weapon or firearm to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Sir, can, can you hear me, sir? Okay, am I, are they not able to hear me back there? What's Your going Honor, on? Your Honor, they Okay, should... while I am speaking, do not talk to the attorney, okay? While I am speaking, listen to me, and then you won't have to have the attorney repeat what I have already said, okay? Do you understand? Thank you. Your Honor, he was requesting if he can be released ROR as he's unable to afford Ma'am, that's denied. Understood. File a motion. M McDonald Horton. Mr. Horton. Yes, ma'am. All right. In your case, I do find probable cause for violation of your PTR conditions, and the bond will stay at no bond. And, Your Honor, I believe this came in as a separate case. Um, therefore, he would be entitled to a bond on this, unless I'm... That's denied. Since the judge ordered no bond, I'm going to comply with that judge's order of no bond. Thank you. Your Honor, if this is a new case, I apologize. I would be objecting as he isn't... Objection to noted for the record. Thank you. Michael Edward Fuller. That's the attorney. Sorry. You were picked up on an outer county warrant. It's not Fuller. It's not Fuller? Okay. Um, I think I'm calling Michael Fuller at this time. Is he um, present? You want to, we still have domestic violence cases. Okay. Well, I'm just going by the order I was given. Well, we can I can put Fuller to the side. And yes, I can call Kiefer at this time. Justin Kiefer. All right, sir. The court does find probable cause in your case for battery, domestic violence. Ma'am, go ahead and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear upon the testimony shall give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Ma'am, what's your name? Laurel Camry. All right, Ms. Camry, um, you're speaking pretty good. I need you to speak just like that when questions are asked of you. Okay. If you into the microphone so I can hear your responses. So I can. Good morning, Ms. Camry. How do you know the defendant? He's my fiance. Do you live together? Yes, we do. While this case is pending, do you want to continue living together? Yes, I do. Has something like this happened before? Never. Were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? No, they were not. Thank you so much for coming in. I have no further questions. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, um, thank you for coming. Sir, you qualify for pretrial release. I'm going to order you to be released on the pretrial release program with an order to have no hostile contact with the victim. Further, you must possess no weapons and no firearms and surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Thank you, sir.
And Your Honor, can he have permission to travel as he travels for work? That's denied. He can seek that through the, the judge. Chardine Philemon. Chardine Philemon. Um, sir, Gordon, raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear upon the testimony shall I give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Are you Wolf Dazme? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Dazme, the state or defense may have questions of you. Please answer all questions into the microphone, and thank you. Good morning, sir. How do you know the defendant? He's my girlfriend. Do you live together? No, we're not. Can you, what's the answer to that first question? How do you know the defendant? Oh, she's my girlfriend. Okay, answer all questions into the microphone. See, I did not hear that response, okay? Go ahead. While this case is pending, do you want to have contact with her? Yes. Has something like this happened before? No. Were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? No, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming in. I have no further questions. Oh, you're um, Ma'am, you qualify for pretrial release. I do find probable cause for your charge. I'm going to order you to be released on the pretrial release program. You're ordered to have no hostile contact with the victim. You're ordered to possess no firearms and no weapons and surrender all firearms or weapons in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Thank you, ma'am, and, and thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Christy Silva, ma'am, in your case, um, the court does find probable cause for the charge of battery. Um, I am ordering that you participate in a pretrial release program as you do qualify. I'm ordering you to have no contact with the victim, no return, unless you need a one-time visit with law enforcement to recover personal items. Um, possess no weapons, possess no firearms, and surrender any weapon or firearm in your possession to law enforcement within 24 hours of release. Further, you must comply with any DCF order that may be entered in this case. Thank you, ma'am. Shatirika <laughs> Alexander is who I have next. Bonded per jail staff. Nicole Blankenship. She refused her appearance, Your Honor. Okay. This is an out of county warrant. Um, we'll reschedule it for 24 hours. I'm sorry. Is that him? This is, I believe, the next one. Um, Artin Doronin. All right, you're picked up on an out-of-county warrant from Miami-Dade. Bond's going to stay at no bond on both counts. Thank you, sir. Michael Garza. Are you Michael Garza? Your Honor, we have a Michael Fuller right before him. Yeah. yeah. Michael Fuller? Yes. All right, Mr. Fuller. You were picked up on an out-of-county warrant from Seminole County. Your bond will stay at no bond. Uh, actually, uh, correction, sir, $995 bond for your out-of-county warrant. Thank you, sir. Next case is Michael Garza. Mr. Garza, you were picked up on out-of-county warrants from Martin County, Florida. Seven counts. Uh, count one, bond stays at 5000 Count two, 5,000. Count three, 5,000. Count four, 750. Count five, 750. Count six, 5,000. Count seven, 5,000. Bond stays at those amounts. Thank you, sir. Elijah Groms. Mr. Groms, you were picked up on an out-of-county warrant from Volusia. Um, count one stays in no bond. Count two, 10,000. Count three, 10,000. Thank you, Mr. Groms. Um, Dalton Petit, Petit, you were picked up on an out-of-county warrant from Lake County. Bond stays in no bond, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Rebecca Banconi. And this is an outer county warrant reset 24 hours. Helvin Contreras Liriano. All right, good. Mr. Contreras Liriano, you were picked up for um, violation of your probation as follows. A special condition, failing to complete 100 hours of community service at a rate of five hours per month. Special condition, failing to successfully attend a thinking for change class. Bond stays at no bond, sir. Thank you. Joseph Fleming. Mr. Fleming, you have a violation of probation matter. Um, as follows. Violation of special condition A, failing to report in person by noon on February 9th, 2022, or within 72 hours of release, and bond stays at no bond as to that charge. You have, um, I said Mr. Fleming had something else. You have um, new charge possession of a controlled substance without, possession of a controlled substance without a prescription bound stay at $1,000. Um, stay, I was not able to look up the out on bond case from Osceola County. Do you have any additional information on that case, if it has been filed or not? Uh, case number 2021-CF, and it is illegible. I, I don't know that. Uh, the clerk states it's 2988 in Osceola County. One moment. I didn't look at, I didn't see it. Okay. Uh, yes, Your Honor, the information was filed uh, back in January of 2022. The court revokes the bond on case number 2021-CF-2988 and bond is set at no bond on all counts. So she didn't, I'll let your attorney know. And Your Honor, if the public defender wasn't already appointed on that, oh, it's in Austin. If, if the public defender wasn't already appointed on the out on bond, if we can be appointed. Unfortunately, I have no idea whether you were appointed or not. Okay. It's, a, it's an Osceola County case. He does have um, representation. I don't Thank know you if it's David Fleury, Mr. Fleury, sir, um, you were picked up for violating your probation. Um, special condition, the victim awareness program failing to complete it. Special condition, failing to complete community service hours. Special condition, failing to pay fines and costs. And special conditions, failing to pay costs of supervision. Bond will stay at no bond. Thank you, sir. And good luck. Trishawn Daquan Littles. Mr. Littles, sir, in your case, you were picked up for violating your probation. Condition E, failing to live without violating any law and being arrested for driving on a suspended license with knowledge on or about June 25th, 2023 in Seminole County. Bond stays at no bond. Thank you, sir. William Mays. My behavior status, Your Honor. Um, reset for 24 hours. Bradley Pierce. Sir, you were picked up for violating your probation. Condition. One, by failing to report to the probation officer as directed, bond stays at no bond. And, Your Honor, for the next case, defense. Chance Rodriguez. 
Chance Rodriguez, is that who you are? No. All right, you're picked up for violation your probation. Ms. Britshaw, were you trying to interject something? Yes, Your Honor. Um, defense would be uh, would be objecting to lack of probable cause. If you look, it appears that he pled to six months of probation on November 21st, 2022. This violation of probation was not filed or authored until after probation ran. Um, if you look at it, I believe the date is between June 13th and 15th. Um, probation would have ran on May 21st, 2023. So this is signed June 14th. 2023 had he already um had probation already expired probation would have expired because it started six months on um november 21st 2022 mm -hmm. meaning it would expire on um, may 21st so i do note that sometimes judges do enter orders um requiring that probation continue to monitor the subject if they've absconded um but I don't know if such an order was entered in this case or not, um, essentially extending probation if the person has absconded, and I don't think his is actually absconding. Um, State, can you confirm that his probation actually had expired? It, it extends to July 20th. I'm sorry, it was extended? To, it, July 20th of 23. All right. That's under the DOC website. Okay. So uh, because of the documentation that uh, has been provided that it had been extended, I'm going to deny that motion. Um, there is also a violation based on con a special condition, failing to complete or remain in drug or alcohol treatment, and uh, possession of drugs. Um, bond will stay at no bond. Thank you. Rodney Santville, sir, you were picked up for violating your probation um, for uh, condition A, failing to report to the probation officer as directed on 5-4-2023. Condition D, changing your residence without first procuring the consent of a probation officer. Condition E, failing to live without violating any law and committing the offense of battery on a person 65 years of age or older on June 7, 2023. Condition E, failing to live without violating any law and committing criminal offense of petty theft on 6-7-2023. Bond will stay at no bond, sir. Which one? Uh, well, the, it's one case, and there's only right. one bond of no bond for the whole case. Thank you, sir. We're here for your violation of probation. Jeremiah Waldron. Jeremiah Waldron. Mr. Waldron, you're picked up for violating your probation. Condition six, associating with a person engaged in criminal activity on or around 2-12-23. Condition seven, using intoxicants to the excess or possessing any drug or narcotic without a prescribed, um, without a prescription. Condition seven, Visiting places where intoxicants, drugs, or other dangerous substances are unlawfully sold, dispensed, or used. Condition 10, failing to make restitution payments. Bond stays at no bond, sir. Thank you. Aaron Worrell. Mr. Worrell, you have two cases, both a violation of probation. Um, condition E, failing to live without violating any law and committing driving while license suspended or revoked with knowledge. Condition, condition E, failing to live without violating any law and committing driving while your license was suspended or revoked with knowledge. Condition D, leaving the county of your residence without first procuring the consent of the probation officer. And the bond will stay at no bond as to that case. You have a second violation of probation. 
condition E, failing to live without violating any law and committing a criminal offense of driving while license suspended, and condition D, leaving your county of residence without first procuring the consent of the probation officer. Bond also stays at no bond on that matter as well. Ms. Frischall, for the second time, I need the defendants to listen to me when I'm speaking, okay? And because they don't hear me if they're talking to you, okay? Yes, Your Honor, I understand. And that, that's on you? Yes, Your Honor. Not on them, because they don't know my rule. Yes, Your Honor. But if, if they start talking to you and I'm speaking, they need to continue listening to me. And then, um, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Arnold Alan Maudor. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Sir, you picked up for violating your probation, condition four, committing the offense of fleeing and eluding on or about May 26, 2023, condition four, committing the offense of no valid driver's license. Sir, listen, listen to me now. On or about May 26, 2023, and special condition, failing to not drive without a valid driver's license. And bond will stay at no bond. Thank you, sir. Um, are there, okay, did we, did we, the interpreter case ever arrive? Um, no, she's still in the, you want me to see what you think? She's still in the apartment downtown. No, um, isn't she coming? She, um, once she's gone in the apartment, I want to know how that's going to pick up. Well, can, why can't we just wait until she gets there? But we can't wait up here. Because she's on, not coming here, she's going to be on that. Once she's gone downtown, she's going to go on that. Well, why can't we just wait until she's ready? Because aren't there two cases? All right, let's just wait until she's ready, unless there's a, there's not a victim out there that needs her, right? There's a, I don't know if she needs, does she need any three owns? There is a victim, I don't know. The victim does not need three owns, the defendant does. Okay. All right, the defendant needs the interpreter, but the victim does not? Okay. I just called the number and I just got mm -hmm. um, it. What about the other case? Is it, is that case up here right now? So I just, the, I just want to do them both at the same yeah, time. Whether we do them with the interpreter that, that's in Orlando or the language line, I just want to do them both at the same time. We got both of them up there, yes. All right, then we'll, um, we'll go ahead and do it if there's a victim. Okay. Uh, this one would be Pierre November. Can you just All right, we are on the record. This is first appearances for July 7th. Let me take the appearances of folks here in the courtroom for the state. Peter Donnelly for the state, Shakaya Pride for the state, and uh, we will also be joined by Claudia Mayo. Donnelly, Pride, and Mayo. Mayo. Um, is that her? Yes, it is, Your Honor. <laughs> And um, there's no one here for PTR? 
They're at the jail, I believe. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, and on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender, please. Trevor Darnell from the Public Defender's Office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We have two interpreter cases, so I will get the interpreter on the line. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is Laura Bretaña, certified Spanish interpreter, previously sworn. Good afternoon. First case on the docket is Yeni Hernandez Puentes, 2023 MM1622. Pity appointed. Se designa el abogado de oficio. Mr. Puentes? Yeah. Are you Mr. Puentes? Es usted el señor Puentes? Yes, sí, Yes. Miss Puentes. Sir, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn? Por favor, levante la mano derecha para prestar juramento. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And Madam Interpreter, that's for a witness that's in the courtroom, not for the defendant. Juri promete que el testimonio que va a prestar será la verdad, solamente la verdad, y nada más que la verdad. ¿Lo jura ante Dios? Sí. Did you say yes, sir? Sí. Yes. Señor, ¿dijo usted que sí? Sí. All right, um, Ms. Hernandez Puentes, you can put your hand down. Señor Hernandez, puede bajar la mano. Can you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Por favor, díganos su nombre completo y su fecha de nacimiento para las actas. Jenny Hernandez Puentes, 12-30-1978. Thank you. A video was shown before I called your case. That video was in Spanish. It advised you of your constitutional rights. Señora, se mostró un video antes de que yo convocara los casos. Este video era en español y en él se le eh, informaba acerca de las garantías procesales que la albergan. Were you present for that video and do you understand those rights? Usted estuvo presente para ver el video y entendió las garantías procesales que allí se anunciaron. Yes. You've been arrested on a single charge of misdemeanor battery. The court has... Go ahead. Señor, usted fue puesto bajo arresto ante una sola acusación de agresión física. I've reviewed the charging affidavit in the case and find there is probable cause to believe you committed that offense. Habiendo repasado el documento acusatorio, determino que existen indicios de criminalidad. The court will address bond and conditions of release. Este juzgado atenderá la fianza y las condiciones de la puesta en libertad. Did the defense wish to be heard as the bond? La defensa desea expresarse en cuanto a la fianza. No, Your Honor. No, su señoría. Did the state wish to be heard as to conditions of release? La fiscalía desea expresarse en cuanto a, en cuanto a las condiciones de la puesta en libertad. Could we hear from PTR if there are any prior, uh, if there's any prior criminal history? Podemos escuchar del Departamento del Programa de Libertad Provisional si tiene antecedentes. La acusada no tiene arrestos previos. Your Honor, I have spoken with the alleged victim in this case and based on the nature of the offense and the fact there's no prior criminal history, the victim would like to have contact and would like the, the defendant to return home and the state would not object to that. Su señoría, nosotros hemos conversado con la víctima y debido a la naturaleza de la acusación y al hecho de que no tiene antecedentes previos y que la víctima desea tener contacto con la acusada y que la acusada regrese al hogar, estamos solicitando que se le permita contacto. Mr. Puentes, are you presently, you're under oath, are you presently still married to Ms. Puentes? Señor Puentes, usted se encuentra bajo juramento. Actualmente, ¿se encuentra usted casado con la señora Puentes? Sí. She has yes. No criminal history. Ella no tiene antecedentes penales. Are there any prior unreported incidents of domestic violence between you and Ms. Puentes? No. ¿Han habido incidentes previos de violencia doméstica entre usted y la señora Puentes que no se hayan informado? No. Are you in fear for your personal safety if she's to return to the home? 
Si ella fuese a regresar al hogar, ¿teme usted por su seguridad personal? No. All right. Bond is set on the sole charge in the amount of $500 as a condition of the defendant's release. She's to have no hostile contact with Mr. Quintus. Se concede fianza por la cantidad de 500 dólares. Cuando se apuesta en libertad, se le prohíbe el contacto hostil con el señor Puente. That concludes your first appearance in this matter, ma'am. Thank you. Señor, esto pone fin a esta primera audiencia. Gracias. Next court date on demand. La fecha de la próxima audiencia se anunciará posteriormente. The next case is the State of Florida versus Andrew Rodriguez. Madam Interpreter, this is the Otter County case, Volusia case number 2023-243067. Would you please state your name and date of birth? Por favor, diga su nombre completo y su fecha de nacimiento. Andrea Rodriguez, eh, first name Andrew, date of birth July 25, 1996. Do you need an interpreter? Necesita usted un intérprete. Okay, that's fine. Muy bien. A video was shown to you explaining your constitutional rights that you have today. Se le mostró un video en el cual se le explicaban las garantías procesales que le albergan. That video was in both Spanish and English. Ese video se presentó tanto en inglés como en español. Were you present for that video and do you understand your rights? Se encontraba usted presente para ese video y entendió las garantías procesales que allí se explicaron. Yes. You've requested appointment of the public defender to represent you and I will appoint the public defender. Usted ha solicitado que se le designe el abogado de oficio para que la represente y se le designa. You've been arrested on a warrant out of Volusia County. Usted fue puesta bajo arresto por una orden de arresto que proviene del condado de Volusia. You were on probation related to a charge of witness tampering. Allí se encontraba libre bajo fianza ante una acusación de interferencia con testigo. It's been alleged that you violated the conditions of your probation and a warrant for your arrest issued. Se le acusa de haber incumplido con las condiciones de la fianza y se emitió una orden de arresto en su contra. Is the issuing magistrate, I'm sorry, do you want to talk to your attorney? Señora, ¿desea usted hablar con su abogado? All right, thank you. Um, the issuing magistrate in issuing that warrant set no bond on the warrant. The court will take no action on the no bond status. El magistrado que emitió la orden de arresto impuso prisión preventiva y no se tomará acción al respecto. You'll be transported to Volusia County for further VOP proceedings. Usted será transportada al condado de Volusia para que allí se proceda con la acusación de incumplimiento con el régimen de libertad vigilada. Before the judge having jurisdiction over your probationary sentence. Y será el juez quien, tiene juridic quien tendrá jurisdicción sobre el, el régimen de libertad vigilada. That concludes your first appearance. Thank you. Esto pone fin a esta primera audiencia. Gracias. If you have any questions, you should probably direct them towards your attorney, okay? Señora, si tiene usted alguna pregunta, por favor, hágasela a su abogado. The next case is the State of Florida versus Adam Anderson. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Thank you, Mr. Anderson. A video was played before I called your case. It advised you of the constitutional rights that you enjoy here today. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right. Um, are you requesting appointment of the public defender to represent you today? Uh, uh, He's standing right next to you. That's all right. Uh, yes. All right. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, you have been arrested on a warrant out of Polk County. In Polk County, you were on probation for resisting a law enforcement officer with violence. It's alleged you violated the conditions of your probation and a warrant was issued for your arrest. 
The issuing magistrate set no bond on that warrant, and this court will take no action on the no bond status of the warrant. Mr. Anderson, you'll be held for transport to Polk County for further violation of probation proceedings before the judge having jurisdiction over your probationary sentence. All right? I've got no information pertaining to whatever case you have here, and I have no idea what uh, the Polk County judge may have told you. Uh, but if he enters an order not requiring you to be sent to Volusia County for the VOP proceedings, then, then that's that, I have no control over that. The next case, Madam Interpreter. Yes, Your Honor. I forgot to cut you free. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. The next case is the State of Florida versus Edwin Echeverry. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Please state your name and date of birth for the record. Edwin Echeverry, August 29, 1979. All right, thank you, Mr. Echeverry. Uh, you were shown a video before I called your case. It advised you of the constitutional rights that you enjoy for today's first appearance. Were you present for that video, and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Are you requesting appointment of the public defender to represent you for this first appearance? Yes, sir. All right, the court will appoint the public defender's office to represent Mr. Echeverry for this first appearance hearing. Mr. Echeverry, you are here on a warrant out of Orange County in 2022 CF 5538. You were on probation for battery, and it's alleged you violated the conditions of your probation. A warrant was issued, and no bond was set on that warrant. Uh, this court will take no action on the no bond status of that warrant. Instead, you'll be held for transport to Orange County for further violation of probation proceedings before the judge having jurisdiction over your probationary sentence. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. The next case is State of Florida versus Marco Cristo, 2022 CF 3410. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Okay. Mr. Christo, you were shown a video advising you of the constitutional rights that you have here today. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Yes. Public Defender's Office will be appointed to represent you. Uh, you have been arrested on a warrant for failure to appear for a plea hearing to a charge of grand theft on or about June 5th of 2023. The judge previously determined there was probable cause to believe you willfully and intentionally failed to appear for that plea date. The issuing magistrate set no bond on that warrant, and this court will take no action on the no bond status. Um, does he have a future court date in that case? You have a future court date in the underlying um, grand theft case, that is? Next court date, August 9th in courtroom 4F at 9 a.m. That concludes your first appearance, Mr. Christo. Thank you. Next case is the State of Florida versus Hector Jimenez. 80 appointed. 2021 CF 3469. Sir, would you please state your name and date of birth? Hector Jimenez. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Um, you were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights before I called your case. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? All right. You've requested appointment of the public defender to represent you, so I will appoint the public defender. The state has, by information filed in 2021 CF 3469, charged you with showing obscene material to a minor. A judge has determined that there is probable cause to believe you committed that offense. I reviewed the charging affidavit and make an independent finding of probable cause to believe that you have committed that offense. Um, the bond on the warrant is set in the amount of $5,000. The defense wish to be heard as to bond? $5,000 of 
$5,000 what? Uh, the $5,000. Court will stay the bond in the amount of $5,000. and will impose all previously imposed non-monetary conditions of release, specifically no contact with the alleged victim, maintain separate residences from the alleged victim, defendant shall not possess or consume alcohol, drugs, or controlled substances without a prescription, defendant shall not, while on release, possess weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Are there any other conditions of release that the state thinks are appropriate? Anything else from the defense? No, Your Honor. All right, that concludes your first appearance, Mr. Jimenez. Thank you. Next court date, July 18th, in courtroom 4F at 9 a.m. The next case is Tedrick Kendrick, 2022 CF 3122. He appointed. Good afternoon. Would you please state your name and date of birth for record purposes? All right, thank you. Mr. Kendrick, before I called your case, uh, a video was shown to you describing the constitutional rights that you enjoy at this first appearance hearing. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Yes, Your Honor. All right, wonderful. You've requested appointment of the public defender, um, and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. You have been charged with aggravated battery causing great bodily harm, domestic violence, battery by strangulation, and witness tampering. The judge that issued that warrant found probable cause to believe that you committed those offenses. The state has, however, filed a motion for your pretrial detention, which requires this court to determine probable cause if the motion is facially sufficient. Mr. Donnelly, you'll be addressing? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the state filed that motion, and I came here to uh, withdraw the motion on the record. We informed Judge Carson's J.A. as well that we would no longer need hearing time, so uh, there's no pretrial detention motion anymore. All right, that motion for pretrial detention was withdrawn on the record by the state. The court will make its own independent finding of probable cause based on my review of the um, affidavit for arrest warrant. We will address bond and conditions of release. Mr. Donnelly. Uh, based on the nature of the charges and the fact that the defendant was arrested, I believe it shows in the warrant in Georgia located near the um, the alleged victim in this case. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, I, I was listening, but I don't think I understood what you said. Say it again. When the defendant was arrested on this case, he was a uh, arrested on a fugitive uh, case in Georgia, um, where they found him residing in the same residence as the alleged victim in this case um there were no he, he wasn't on, out on ptr or bond or anything like that there were no conditions preventing him from doing that uh, but the state's concern about follow-up violence and potential manipulation in this case is very high so we'd ask for a high monetary bond above the schedule um, and that there be no contact with the victim uh, that there be no third party contact with the victim and that they maintain separate residences Mr. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We're, we're just asking that no reasonable law is set. There's no reason to believe that the, the no-contact order would not be sufficient to keep him from the victim. And the victim in this case, um, we just think the law just be reasonable. Did he at some time reside in Georgia? He no longer resides in Georgia. No. Mr. Donnelly, so if he, when he resolves the case here, he'll be um, extradited to Georgia? I, at this time, I do not believe that there's any open case in Georgia. Um, they arrested him on this warrant in Georgia. Okay. All right. 
Bond is set as to count one in the amount of $7,500. Bond is set as to count two in the amount of $250. Bond is reduced from $1,000 to $250 with respect to count three. The additional non-monetary conditions of the defendant's release are that he have no contact directly or indirectly in person or by electronic communication with the named victim in the case, no return to the scene of the alleged offense, and the victim and the defendant are to maintain separate residences. If Mr. Kendrick has any personal effects located at um, the scene of the alleged offense, he'll be permitted a one-time return accompanied by law enforcement in order to receive those personal effects. That's all I have, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Next court date, July 18th, in courtroom 4F at 9 a.m. The next case is Judon Phillip, the state of Florida versus Judon Phillip, 2023 CF 2023. Katie appointed. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth for the record? All right, thank you, sir. Before your case was called, a video was shown advising you of certain rights that you enjoy in today's proceeding. Were you present for that video and do you understand those rights? Are you seeking appointment of the public defender to represent you? Yes, All right, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, you've been charged by information with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, uh, three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon pertaining to three different victims. I've reviewed the charging affidavit and find there is probable cause to believe you committed each of those offenses. Who's addressing this case, Ms. Ms. Mayo? Yes, Your Honor. So the initial appearance information sheet uh, indicates that there's an added charge. There's only three people identified in the um, charging affidavit, and each of them, I think that corresponds to the information that's been filed. Is there something added? Added charges means that he's probably in jail on something else, and they served the warrant on him. Okay. Could you direct to confirm that? Um, he's asking about the information sheet for the PTR. It says added charge. Is this defendant on, and is he arrested on something else as well, and then the warrant was served on him? Correct. He was already incarcerated here at the jail, and he had All right, and he has had his first appearance in that case? Yes. Okay, thank you for clarifying. All right, the court will find probable cause for each of the uh, offenses with which Mr. Phillips is charged. Um, the issuing magistrate also determined probable cause and set bond as to each count in the amount of $1,500 for a total bond amount of $4,500. Did the state or defense wish to be heard as to bond? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Right. Bond is stayed in the amount of $1,500 with respect to each of the three counts. Court will further order consistent with the issuing magistrate's order, no contact directly or indirectly with any of the three named victims. While on release, the defendant will not possess any weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Are there any other uh, non-monetary conditions of release that the state thinks are appropriate in this case? All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Next court date. July 17th and courtroom 5 a.m. at 8.45 a.m. The next case is the State of Florida versus Eric Sandlin, 2023, CF 865. PD appointed. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Eric Sandlin, 72279. All right, thank you, Mr. Sandlin. Uh, before I called your case, there was a video shown describing the constitutional rights that you enjoy in today's proceeding. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. All right. Are you seeking appointment of the public defender to represent you for today's proceeding? Yes, thank you. All right. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, you have been charged with two counts of failing to report, and a warrant was issued. The issuing magistrate found probable cause to believe that you committed those offenses. I've reviewed the affidavit for arrest warrant and will also find there's probable cause to believe that you committed those offenses. Um, pursuant to the warrant, bond is to be set at this first appearance hearing. 
Um, did the state wish to be heard as to the amount of bond or conditions of release? Mr. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? Ms. Mayo, did you wish to respond? He's transient and the defense is seeking ROR. release on his own recognizance. The non-monetary condition of his release is that he report as required by law within 24 hours of the date of his release. Mr. Sandlin, if you fail to report consistent with that condition of your release, that'll give the state uh, cause to seek for me or the judge assigned to the case to revoke your release due to your failure to comply with the non-monetary conditions. Your attorney can answer any further questions you might have. That concludes your first appearance. Thank you. Next court date, July 11th, courtroom 5F at 8.15 a.m. All right, apologize for that uh, break. The next cases are State of Florida versus Yolanda Aponte, two cases 2023 MM16 and 2023 CT3007. ED appointed. Afternoon, ma'am, would you please state your name and date of birth? All right, thank you. Um, before your cases were called, you were shown a video describing the constitutional rights that you have here today. Were you present for that video and do you understand those rights? All right. Um, you've sought appointment of the public defender to represent you for this proceeding, so I'll appoint the public defender. In 2023 MM 16, 16, you have been charged with resisting law enforcement officer without violence. And in 2023 CT 3007, you are charged with driving with a suspended license with knowledge of the suspended license. I have reviewed the charging affidavits in each of the cases and will find probable cause to believe that you committed each of those offenses. We'll address bond and conditions of release. PTR, can you give me some insight into Ms. Aponte's criminal history, if any? She has history dating back to 2009. But she does qualify, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? Uh, we request PTR, Your Honor. State? State has no objection, Your Honor. All right. The defendant will be released for pretrial to pretrial release through the Department uh, County Corrections. 
Additional non-monetary conditions of her release will be that she not drive without a valid license. That concludes your first appearance, ma'am. Have a good day. Next court day for 2023 MN 1616 on demand and for 23 CT 3007. Next court day, August 9th in courtroom 5B at 9.30 a.m. The next case is the state of Florida versus Daniel Dittmar, 2023 CF 2041. Appointed. Sir, would you please state your name and date of birth for the record? All right, thank you, Mr. Dittmar. Um, before I called your case, a video was shown explaining the constitutional rights that you enjoy to you. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Yeah. All right. Um, you've requested appointment of the public defender, and I'm appointing the public defender to represent you for today's proceeding. Uh, you've been arrested on charges of retail petty theft and possession of a controlled substance. Additionally, you are out on bond in Osceola case number 2023 CF 522 uh, when those alleged offenses occurred. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and will find there's probable cause for the two new offenses of retail petty theft and possession of a controlled substance. We'll address bond and conditions of release in the new case. State, did you wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. Mr. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? Bond is set on the charge of retail theft in the amount of $250 in possession of a controlled substance in the amount, I'm sorry, did they charge the, yes, $250 with respect to the charge of retail petty theft and as to the felony charge, bond is set in the amount of $1,000. Is the state seeking any relief with respect to the case for which Mr. Dittmar was out on bond? No, Your Honor. Having it, found... It, Your Honor, this is the trial release. He's out on bar. Is, yeah, Judge, and it's a 32-day motion, Your Honor. Just so that you're aware. It was granted on... To, on March 22nd, 23, by Judge Dean. Mr. Darnell, did you wish to be heard with respect to revocation of the defendant's release in Osceola case number 2023 CF522? I, I couldn't hear what the clerk said. He's out on a 33-day motion for the ROR for that case. Court will take no action on the status of the defendant's release on his own recognizance in 2023 CF 522. Next court date on demand. Next case is the state of Florida versus Matthew Cook, 2023 CF 2048. No application for this defendant. I'm sorry, what was the name, Your Honor? K U C H. Should be in the John Doe 3273. Uh, let's see. He had two charges in 2023 CF 2041. He was out on bond in Osceola 2023 CF 522. We didn't receive that from the jail. Not that I'm aware of. The only book you were... That's 2023 CF 2041. No, this is a different we only, we only received one booking report with okay. two charges on it. We didn't receive it from the jail. Correct. All right. That'll be reset. All right. What did you do with the case? was out of our No action. Court took no action. All right, John Doe 3273 refused. Reset for tomorrow. The next case is the state of Florida versus John Fortunato, 2023 MM1621. He refused as well, Your Honor. He is PD appointed. So the PD one. 
Have you met with Mr. Fortunato? I have not, Okay, reset for tomorrow. The next case is the State of Florida versus Ehab Hossein, 2023 CF2050. Your Honor. Next case is the State of Florida versus Jermaine Jacob, 2023 CF2051. PD appointed. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth? All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jacob, before your case was called, there was a video shown advising you the constitutional rights that you have today. Um, were you present for the viewing of that video, and do you understand those rights? All right. You've requested appointment of the public defender, so the public defender's office is appointed to represent you for this first appearance hearing. In 2023 CF 2051, you have been arrested on two charges of dealing in stolen property and providing false verification of ownership to a pawnbroker. You are also, at the time of the alleged offenses, out on bond in Osceola case number 2023 CF 1977. I've reviewed the charging affidavit in 2023 CF 2051 and will find there is probable cause to believe you violated or that you committed the criminal offenses of dealing in stolen property and providing false verification of ownership to a pawnbroker. We'll address bond and conditions of release in this case uh, and then what action, if any, is to be taken uh, in the case for which Mr. Jacob is out on bond. Did the state wish to be heard as to bond? No, Your Honor. Mr. Darnell? No, Your Honor. Bond is set as to count one, the second degree felony in the amount of $7,500 and $250 with respect to count two. Did the state wish to be heard as to which, what action, if any, is to be taken as to the case for which Mr. Jacob is out on bond? No, no, the state has no position on that, Your Honor. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. The defense would just request that the bond be remained in place on the case. Having found probable cause to believe Mr. Jacob committed a new criminal offense while on release in 2023 CF 1977, his release is revoked in that case. The bond is forfeited. Mr. Jacob, that concludes your first appearance in this case. Next court date on demand. Yes. Mr. Jacob would like to inform you that the case that he's out on bond on actually occurred uh, after this case that he was uh, arranged for tomorrow and it's very April 25th, 2023, March 27th, 2023, March 31st, 2023, April 1st, 2023, April 25th, 2023, May 2nd, 4th, and 9th of 2023, and June 22nd, 
in 2023 CF 1977? It shows on here, Judge, that he bonded out on June 30th. All right, that appears to be accurate, so I'll vacate my prior order and the court will take no action in 2023 CF 1977. Yes. Nice catch, Mr. Jacob. Correct. Oh, I don't know if I said 5,000. I thought it was uh -huh. 7,500. 7,500 on count one and $250 on count two. The next case is the State of Florida versus Casey Jonas, 2023 MM 1623. Katie appointed. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth? All right. Thank you, Mr. 1991. Thank you, Mr. Jonas. Uh, before I called your case, a video was shown advising you of the constitutional rights that you have today. Um, were you present when that video was shown, and do you understand those rights? Yes. You've requested appointment of the public defender, and I'm appointing the public defender to represent you for today's proceeding. You have been arrested on a single charge of possession of drug paraphernalia. I have reviewed the charging affidavit in the case and find there is probable cause to believe you committed that offense. We'll address bond and conditions of release. Did the defense wish to be heard as to bond? State wish to be heard? The state has no position. Defendant is released on his rec own recognizance with respect to the sole misdemeanor charge of possession of drug paraphernalia. And there are no non-monetary conditions of release. That concludes your first appearance, Mr. Jonas. Have a good day. Thank you all. Yes. Next case is the State of Florida versus Isaac Manning, 2023 CT 3013 and 2023 CT 3014. Katie appointed. Could you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Thank you, Mr. Manning. You were shown a video before I called your case advising you of the constitutional rights that you have. Were you present when that video was shown and do you understand those rights? All right, you've requested appointment of the public defender to represent you, and I will appoint the public defender. You've been arrested on two charges, the first driving under the influence, the second driving under the influence causing property damage. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and find there's probable cause to believe you committed each of those offenses. We will address bond and conditions of release. Mr. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? State wish to be heard? Uh, the state has no position, Your Honor. Defendant is released on his own recognizance with respect to count one. Bond is set in the amount of $500 with respect to count two. That concludes your first appearance, Mr. Manning. Next court date on 23 CT 3013. July 31st in courtroom 4A at 9 a.m. And for 23 CT 3014, if still in jail, July 13th, if out July 31st in courtroom 4A at 9 a.m. The next case is the state of Florida versus Kyle Patterson, 2023 MM 1624. PD appointed. Patterson, can you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Um, 
Before I called your case, you were shown a video that describes certain constitutional rights that you have today. Um, were you present when that video was shown, and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. You've requested appointment of the Public Defender's Office to represent you, so I'll appoint the Public yes, Defender's Office. You've been arrested on charges of misdemeanor battery and misdemeanor assault. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and find there is probable cause to believe that you committed each of those offenses. We'll address bond and conditions of release. PTR, can you describe for me the information you've received from the alleged victim? I was told the victim this morning and she advised that she didn't want to have contact and would like for me to return back to the home. Ms. Mayo, did the state wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. The state would just request a non monetary condition of no hostile. Have you also reached out to the alleged victim? Not at this time, yeah. PTR, uh, can you provide me some insight into Mr. Patterson's criminal history? Yes, he has history dating back to the, um, 2018 for aggravated battery and battery and juvenile. And he um, has a All right, bond is set as to count one in the amount of $500, and bond is set as to count two in the amount of $250. Uh, considering the particular facts and circumstances set forth in the chart, trading affidavit, and taking into account um, that the victim re requests contact and that the defendant returned to the home, I'm satisfied that a non-monetary condition of no hostile contact is sufficient um, sufficient to protect the alleged victim. So the court will order as a non-monetary condition of release that the defendant have no hostile contact with the alleged victim. Mr. Patterson, your attorney will explain to you that any allegation of hostile contact will provide cause for the state to seek to revoke your release in this case, okay? All right, that concludes your first appearance. Thank you. Next court date on demand. Next case is the State of Florida versus Daniel Rosario, 2023 CF 2052. No application for this defendant. Afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth? Daniel Rosario, 1972. Thank you, Mr. Rosario. Uh, before I called your case, you were shown a video describing the constitutional rights that you enjoy in today's proceeding. Were you present for the viewing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Are you able to afford a lawyer? Yes. Would you like me to reset this case till tomorrow to give you the opportunity to reach out to that lawyer so you can have your private counsel attend? That would mean that you spend one more night in jail, but you have a right to have your private attorney attend. Alternatively, I can appoint the public defender's office for the limited person purpose of this first appearance hearing, and then you can go ahead and retain private counsel later on down the line. What would you like to do? Uh, say that again? You would be... Well... Before I answer that... Um, Is the state seeking any sort of pretrial detention in this case by virtue of count one, which I understand to be uh, punishable by life? Uh, yes, Your Honor. 
So what are you asking for? That the uh, bond be set at zero. I mean, I guess it already is set. The bond be stayed at zero. Mr. Um, Rosario, you are charged with burglary with an assault or battery therein, which is a first degree felony punishable by life in prison, robbery, and petty theft. I hesitated in answering your question uh, because, be, because a punishable by life offense is charged, um, the state has the option of asking that you be held um, pending a final hearing to determine whether or not you qualify for pretrial detention by virtue of that charge. Uh, you would be eligible for bond today, uh, though. So can I appoint the public defender to represent you for today's purposes? Yes. All right, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. I've reviewed the charging affidavit and will find there's probable cause to believe the defendant committed each of the offenses for which he is charged will address bond and conditions of release. Ms. Mayo? The state would just request that he does be held. For this. Mr. Darnell? The uh, would request that bond is uh, all the counts of this case. Uh, bond will be set in the amount of $20,000 with respect to count one, $250 with respect to count two, and $150 with respect to count three. As a non-monetary condition of Mr. Rosario's release, he'll be ordered to have no contact with the alleged victim in the case. Anything else, Ms. Mayo? No, Your Honor. Anything else, Mr. Darnell? That concludes your first appearance in this case, Mr. Rosario. Thank you. Next court date on demand. Do you want to add another? I think it was that road rage thing. Sure. No return. Okay. The next case is Kelvin Sanchez, the state of Florida versus Kelvin Sanchez, 2023 CF 2054. Kitty appointed. Could you please state your name and date of birth, sir? 72791, Kelvin Sanchez. All right, thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Before I called your case, uh, a video was shown describing the constitutional rights that you enjoy in this first appearance proceeding. Were you present for the showing of that video, and do you understand those rights? Oh, yeah, the video, yes, yes, sir. All right, you understand the rights that were described to you in that video? Okay. You've requested appointment of the Public Defender's Office to represent you, and I will appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. In this 2023 CF 2054, you were arrested on charges of possession of a controlled substance without a prescription, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting a law enforcement officer without violence. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and find there's probable cause to believe you committed each of the offenses with which you are charged. We'll address bond and conditions of release in this case. Did the state wish to be heard as the bond? The state has no position, Your Honor. Darnell, did you wish to be heard? Bond is set in the amount of $1,000 with respect to count one and $150 with respect to count two and $150 with respect to count three. Mr. Sanchez, in 2020. 2 CF 1685 in Osceola County, uh, you were arrested on a warrant for your failure to appear for a violation of probation arraignment on June 29th of 2023. Bond for, your, for that case was set in the warrant in the amount of $3,500, uh, and the court will stay the bond in that amount and will not uh, change it 
uh, any bond reduction can be sought before the judge having jurisdiction over that case. All right, that concludes your first appearance. Thank you. Next court date. Next court date on 23 CF 2054 on demand and 22 CF 1685. Next court date, July 20th in courtroom 4F at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. Mr. Darnell, do you have any other cases? Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. All right. Thanks, everyone, very much. Court is in recess.